okay excuse the snow if you can see the snow it's actually snowing right now but we are working on a main combi 24 he and in this video we're going to be looking at changing over the diverter valve so there's actually two videos i'm going to do on this diverter valve so the first one will be changing and just replacing the whole body so if you get it refurbished you can maybe get the body for maybe 80 ish pounds um i've seen them on ebay or if you used to buy it um brand new i think i've seen them for a couple of hundred online so i'll do a video on just simply replacing the brass body with all the washers inside and then i'll also do a video of taking the body out stripping it down and replacing all the washers inside i think you can get a kit for maybe 20 pound i've seen them on ebay so if you look in the description below i'll put some reasons why you might need to change the diverter in the first place but without wasting any more time let's get into it so you probably know how to take off the case by now but if you don't you've got two screws one here one here i'll loosen them white front case should slide up take it off take out the two screws pop the front panel down and for this it is on the heating and hot water circuit so you're going to need to isolate the valves drain down the boiler so isolating the valves pretty simple that's what your valves will look like for the flow and return hot water uh, cold water will also look the same so just twist them to 90 degrees and then that will be them isolated and then our drain off is right here in this corner this white handle so you might be able to reach it with your hands if it's not too tight you might be able to reach it from here or underneath depending on how the PRV has been done if not I always find that you can always use grips so to put your grips on and then we are twisting down like that to open the valve so once you do that water start coming you also just put a bucket underneath or attach your U gauge tube to it so once you have done that we are going to start stripping it down so even though you drain down the boiler some water will most likely come so make sure you have a bucket or rag or something underneath so we're just going to start off by taking off this switch here so we're just going to undo this nut which holds the switch to the diverter body so put that down there push that to the side and then we're going to undo these two nuts at the top of the diverter valve one put it to the side and then we have the one behind it okay that is both of them out all right so for this back switch there we're just gonna pop these two cables off to make it easier they should just wiggle off just like that pull them off okay and then the way I do it is I undo I'm not sure if you can see that clip right there where my finger is I undo that clip that goes into the back of this right hand side block So these do have the tendency to just pop off so try to take it off without losing it that is the clip and then if you put your hand in and down you should be able to feel let's see if I can show you the pipe I'm going to be doing so it is that bottom one where my finger is so if you put your hand on it and follow it round to the back of the plate and you come to this side you'll see my hand here we're just gonna wiggle it up and 
if you can see we popped it out there so that's it disconnected from the right hand side so now what we need to do is get a spanner and also undo this nut here which goes up to the main heat exchanger so Okay, so you're just gonna put your spanner on it like that and you're gonna twist it forward to unloosen it. Now, this knot can be very tight sometimes, so you can put some WD-40 on it, leave it to soak for a few minutes. If that still doesn't work and it's still really tricky to get off, what I have done before in the past to try to get them off is just put your spanner on it like that and then just get a hammer and you're just going to use your hammer and whack it up very so gently you don't want to do it too hard otherwise you can dislodge it from the heat exchanger up there and that's another thing you're going to have to check after if you do use the route of using a hammer so once you have done that you're just going to unloosen that nut be a washer inside as well so be prepared for that to fall out if it's not stuck to the body or the nut okay so now that that's out what we need to do now is underneath the boiler there will be screws holding the body down to the boiler so I'm gonna have to bring the boiler down you probably won't have to do that because you have access underneath the boiler but let me see if I can show you. Okay, so if you see we have a screw right there that we need to undo. Okay. So now our diverter we also just need to undo this nut right here for the pressure gauge if you can't see what nut I'm talking about it's this one right here alright so now we should be able to wiggle it out of here this is just a little push fit connection here so it just slots in and slots out and then that screw underneath just holds it in place so we should be able to wiggle it out like that and if you see that has popped off like that. so now we just need to get the diverter and unhook it out but bear in mind water will be coming when you undo all these connections so obviously be prepared okay so we've listed that forward we're going to need to push it up because we'll see the valves underneath another thing you're also going to have to undo the flow nut going onto the boiler onto the diverter valve to get it off okay so let's get this out now a little bit tricky because you've got a lot of wires in the way so just be careful be patient you don't want to damage anything all right so that is your diverter valve so when you get your new diverter valve you're only gonna have this you're not gonna have this tube so we are just gonna quickly disconnect these so I'm just gonna pop this clip off Get our spanner. 
Now, in theory, you can just you can just undo this side from the diverter valve. You don't need to necessarily undo it from here, but I've always found it very tricky to undo this nut and do it back up when it's in the boiler. So I'll just take it off from this side, then once it's out, do this side. I've always found that side much easier to do, but if you're able to do it this way, then go for it. Okay, so we're just gonna wiggle these out together. So if that was in a boiler and you want to see that side on, you literally undo that clip there, undo that nut, pop it out, but I've always found it very tricky to do that way, so the way I've done it might be easier for you. So yeah, this is what you'll most likely get if you do just buy the whole body. Obviously you'll need to take your switch off, just one screw there and then pop it on the new one. So let's suppose this is your new one now, same thing. Just gonna pop that back in, make sure the seals are okay. Sometimes they do leak, so you might need to put a little bit of PTFE on there or maybe a little bit of paste. So, I'm just gonna line these up. Okay. Sometimes trying to catch the thread on these little ones are a bit tricky so just wiggle the pipe around it till you catch it. And I'm just going to keep tightening that until it's nice and tight so you don't want to overdo it. And then we're just gonna pop our clip back in here. Like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it back in to the right hand side block. So same thing, making sure we're just getting all the wires and connections out of the way so we don't damage anything. Oh, before I put it back in I will just show you this is going to be in a different video though so you can take off and strip this hole down and just put the new washers in and it also do the same thing as replacing it but that will be in a different video so this is just if you bought a whole new diverter valve So first thing I usually do is slot this in. So I just push it in, simple. And then we have our nut that we need to undo, that we need to do up on the underside of the boiler that holds it in place. So I'm gonna put it back in the same place there. And the reason I put it in first is just so I know that the diverter is in the right place. So, I'm just gonna put that in there if you can see that. Okay, that's that in. Now, that connection shouldn't be able to come out. Alright, so, I'm gonna pop this back in. Here's pressure gauge, make sure the washer's on there. Do that. Up. Okay, then we're gonna pop in that back connection on the right hand side. 
so again put your hand in through here hook it round and just push it in and then your clip you should just be able to put your hand underneath and get in if not you can also do it from the top side all right that's that in and just pull on it to make sure it's in properly last thing you want is to do out the boiler and then it pops out headache okay so that's that done then we have our two nuts that we need to put in here I usually put the back one in first so then you have access with your spanner So you're just going to keep doing that up until it's nice and tight and then also this front one as well okay then just keep doing that one until it's nice and tight as well you'll know which way round they go because the height of them are different if you put it the wrong way around it'll look strange okay so then we have our connections that we took off the switch up here we need to pop back on one two then we have our nut on the left hand side we also need to reattach to make sure the wash is on there Don't know what nut I'm talking about. It is that one right there. So, so open up your spanner and we'll tighten it. But if you did have to use the hammer because it was quite stiff, I would just recommend taking off the front case and making sure it's not leaking I'll show you which connection it is quickly So it is that connection right there. So if that was to the leak, then you just pop the side off, that screw, that screw, that screw, and then you can take it out, either put some PTFE or paste, push it back in, put the clip on. But most of the time it doesn't leak, just on the rare chance that it does happen, that is what you'll need to do. Okay, so obviously you would need to put your screws back in for there. Alright, so where was we? So that's done. We can pop our switch back on here. And obviously under the boiler you would need to reattach your flow valve so make sure the wash is in there and then just reattach it there like that okay so I think that is pretty much it so obviously from there you'd do up your for the well drain off try to drain off then you would unisolate your flow return and cold mains into the boiler you'd look at all your connections make sure nothing is leaking and then once you have done that 
that should be everything so we'll just put the boiler back together make sure it's operating safely do your checks yeah that is changing over the body for the diver like i said i'll do another video soon once i get the kit um on changing all the internals of this diver obviously it is the cheaper option but it's also the longer option so it's always on the budget of the customer but yeah that is it